Crash Craddock is with us on a Monday. G'day, Crash. Great to have you on. Thank you, Sam. Yes, dramatic times, wasn't it? Uh, Low-scoring, brute of a game, really. Totally out of kilter with a lot of things happening around it in the World Cup, which only makes me think India presented a spinning deck knowing that that was Australia's short suit. I feel like we've been here before. I've got deja vu, but obviously with Zampa, the only spinner, and coming in off that bizarre swing pool injury uh, as well. Are we just to talk selection right off the top? I'm not sure if there's anything we can even do here, Crash. But are we? We're short on here, aren't we? Yes, we are. And, and like, it's just that you know, Marcus Stoinis uh, wasn't in the team because he was injured. And yet there was place for Josh Hazelwood and, and still Sean Abbott misses out. So that says to me we've got one all-rounder too many and one spinner too few with Adam Zampa, the only spinner. And, you know, Sam, it's funny. When you choose a guy as a sole frontline spinner, I think he feels that extra burden. Now, Adam didn't bowl too well last night. He was short. Sure, it was after dark. There was a bit of dew on the ball, I think. But it wasn't Zampa at his best. Now, we're, we're expecting Glenn Maxwell to lift as a second spinner, but that, again, has pressure. We've seen with Moeen Ali from England, when you get a, a sort of a part-timer to do a front-liner's role, it, it, it can it can pressurise them out of the game. So, yeah, we're short a spinner. And I, I think that Nathan Lyon, uh, is well worthy of taking over, um, you know, it, it, it sending over if there's another injury. So let's start with the bat. Obviously, win the toss, bat first. We're two for 110, I think. Warner uh, batted with some reasonable fluidity, I, I reckon. And, and then Steve Smith joined him for a long time at the crease. Mitch Marsh had a, had a dirty night, didn't he? He did drop that catch we spoke about earlier and a, and a six-ball duck as well. But, gee, then it unraveled quickly after that, didn't it? Oh, look, it did. And as soon as Ravi Jadeja, who took three wickets, just had a a, a look about him of a guy who was going to take wickets, as soon as uh, some of the commentators saw the deck, they started tweeting, oh, it's going to be a big night for uh, Jadeja tonight. And it was, too. Ashen was suitably tidy as well. But it's the spinners just sort of ground Australia down. The wicket spun and uh, it, it also uh, just just that we hadn't been playing that well in this form of the game, and I think they just sort of choked Australia to death. It was a for, for two for 110. They didn't need much more, Sam. I reckon 250 would have won the game. Strange enough to say, yeah. and they were nearly four for 20. If Marsh had taken that catch off of Firat Kohli, they were four for 20, and I reckon it was Australia's game. But in the end, they got trounced. It's not the end of the road because they play nine prelim games. <laughs> wow, that's a lot, isn't <laughs> that's it? That's a lot you, of cricket. <laughs> you probably got to win six of them, Sam, I reckon, to be guaranteed a semi-spot. So there's one loss down. They can probably afford two more with South Africa next up. Yeah, so how are we to view the South Africans then after all the uh, records that tumbled uh, with their most recent outing? Well, <clears throat> they're a slightly underestimated team in that in test cricket they've really fallen away, but they've got a group of power hitters who are, you know, very, very dangerous players. And, you know, Quentin de Kock in, in his final swan song for 50 over cricket, he, he's playing well. Uh, you know, they've got, you know, and, and as always, useful fast bowlers. So they're dangerous. They uh, <laughs> traditionally and famously South Africa tend to choke at World Cups, you know, and they've got that horrible reputation. And it is true because for all their talent, they should have had, had far more success at World Cups than what they do. But in a tournament where not a lot's expected of them, they're dangerous and they're Australia's next opponent. Yeah, just before we move on to some domestic cricket uh, crash, Rick dropped us a text while we were talking. He says, uh, one bloke no one talks about is Alex Carey. He's been questionable at best, has done nothing with the bat for a long time and his keeping has just been so-so. Ask what crash thinks. And I was listening to Tim Payne this morning uh, with with Tom Morris and Dermot Brereton on SEM Breakfast here, Crash, and he said, if a change isn't going to be made when it comes to Alex Carey, then at least least he needs to be sat down and talk through his role and, and his and his methods and I guess his line of thinking and his aggressiveness at the crease. What, how are you to look at Alex Carey's form, I, I guess particularly w- with the blade? Yeah, well, look, he, he was good at times in the ashes and then faded out of it, didn't he, uh, after the, the Bairstow incident. I, I, I like him and I think he's a big-time player and will come good, 
But your keeper who's batting in the – if he's batting in a top six, he has to score – like the, he's dependent on to score runs, and he will. So I, I've always sensed that the game plan he, he has, which involves a lot of sweeps, is dangerous against the better teams. You know, when you're bowling against Ashwin – and you're bowling against Jadeja, you know, they, they've seen a million guys try to try to play the sweep, and he he's just, I don't know, it, for me, he hasn't looked quite the same player since the Bearstow incident in England, and Australia rampantly defended that, didn't they? They said, no, yeah. Alex is fine, but since then, I, I've been slightly concerned that his form has been on a downward trend. I would not drop him at this stage, no. I, I, I'd have a bit of faith in him, because I think, you know, <laughs> Big tournaments are won by heavy-duty players, and he is one. But he's not at the peak of his powers at the moment, I'll grant you that. Jake Fraser-McGurk. I tell you what, those three names uh, crash. Uh, they were the talk of the weekend, to be honest. The South Australia uh, cricketer blasting a 29-ball 100 just to set a new world record for the fastest century in a 50-over cricket match. It was amazing scenes. Before I get your thoughts on it, here's, uh, here's some of the action from the weekend. Uh, not exactly overcome with excitement in the aftermath, you'd have to say. <laughs> no, it was the most subdued world record oh. of all time, wasn't it? But look, interesting player. When it, he, he was a superstar as a junior and was chosen for every rep team he was eligible for as he was surging through the ranks in Victoria. And uh, the Australians watched him a few years ago when he was a kid facing up to, I think it was Jackson Bird and Michael Neeser in Brisbane in the Nets and thought, who is this kid? He's sublime. But, and Chris Rogers, who's a, a suitably modest marker of up-and-coming talent. He doesn't get carried away. He said, oh, this kid's special. But sometimes you can be too special. And I think in, in his first nine first-class games, he averaged about 20. And that's his, so he's off to South Australia. And a fresh start will be good for him. The boom is, was sort of off him, you know. But it's amazing. Those shots for people who didn't see them uh, that disappeared over the fence at the admittedly small Karen Rolton Oval. <laughs> yep. But the balance of him, Sam. Like, it was almost like watching a, a, a golfer off the first tee, a top professional, where it, it's almost effortless and it's sweet and it's rhythmical and very much a modern thing. Like, old players just never had... Alan Border says he looks at the nets now and sees shots that he just never played, like swing planes, which are the ball, you know, from these giant arcs coming through. He just let himself off the leech, Jake, and it was quite something to watch immediately becoming a player of interest to the national selectors. Now, he's got a long way to go, but anyone who can do that, small ground and all, yeah. is a bit special. So maybe he's going to go back to be the player he was as a teenager when he was one of the most, you know, here he comes, Jake through the grades. So let's see what he's got. Ten boundaries, 13 sixes, and as some have uh, joked on Twitter, get that man on the plane to India ASAP. But uh, and, and incredibly, they lost. They went down, crash. They lost the game. South Australia, I know they did, which does say something about the size of the ground when one team, when you can have, you, you think of that off 29 balls, so that's five overs, and he took and he, and he, and he lowered the score by more than 120 off, five, off effectively five overs, and they still couldn't win. Oh. <laughs> Poor old South Australia, they, oh, I feel sorry for him. Now, I missed this last night, just before we get to the break crash, uh, this text coming from Block in Ringwood, on a side note, did you see Rohit Sharma's coin? toss. It ended up at mid-wicket and Richie Richardson had to run to see who won it. Makes Simon Meredith's opening bounce at the AFL Grand Final look almost perfect. I miss this. Did it slip out of the mitt or something? Yeah, I think he gave it a bit of a uh, bit of a heave ho and had a roll on it. You know, it, we've we've seen some funny coin tosses, haven't we, over the years? <laughs> like U Usman Khawaja, after being taunted by Warney that he lacked energy, does these supercharged <laughs> uh, coin tosses where he where he tosses the tosses the coin, uh, you know, uh, miles in the air. And I always remember the uh, the famous Max fixture, Salim Malik, the Pakistani, back in the 1990s. He used to toss the coin over his shoulder and then go and get it and he said uh, if the guy called heads he said yeah it's a tail and, and, and that prompted the introduction of match referee Sam for the toss it used to be just the captains together until Salim used to throw it over his shoulder and then if the bloke called a head he'd say sorry pal tail yeah yeah <laughs>